Who here has heard of the word trivia before? Show of hands? Thanks. So I was researching homeschooling and came across this word, the trivium. And I started to look further into it. I started to ask those around me, uh, people that have gone to college. And I'm like, have you ever heard of this word trivium? And they're like, yeah, yeah, it has something to do with. Uh, and uh, went on Facebook, typed it on there. I'm like, has anybody heard of this word trivium? It seems pretty important. And what I found was this method of thought, a way to organize your thoughts, to process your thinking, and then to be able to share this with the world. And it seemed really important to me, and as I'm researching homeschooling options and, and, and things I want to pass down to my children, uh, I'm diving in with both feet. So I'm going to talk about what the trivium is. So the trivium consists of three parts. The Latin root word uh, for the trivium means where the three roads meet. So the three different aspects of the trivium involve general grammar, formal logic, and classic rhetoric. We've all kind of heard these words before. Um, I never made it to uh, college, so I never got to spend time dabbling into to what these words really mean. So. I'm learning all about it now, I'm going to share it with you. So grammar, we've all heard the word grammar, but come to find out there's two types of grammar. There's special grammar and there's general grammar. Special grammar is what we are all taught in grade school. And it has to do with spelling, sentence structure, phonetics, and, and how to put paragraphs together. General grammar, turns out, is how to organize a body of data. This body of this this data is comes from your five senses: your sight, sound, taste, touch, and hearing. And by putting that data into uh, to to bring in that data, and then to be able to organize that data into uh, a body of knowledge, is what general grammar is all about. So you, then you take that general or that that body of knowledge and you bring it up into formal logic. Formal logic was created by Aristotle, and it's about taking that data and being able to process that data by um, removing contradictions within that data. So you organize the data, you then are able to process, think about that data, and then we move on to rhetoric, which is the ability to share that data with the outside world. So using these three methods, you learn how to critically think, how to take in information, think about it, and then be able to share it with your outside world. Pretty important skill to have. And so it really surprised me that this wasn't such a well-known word. Like, why aren't we all doing this? So I dived into the history of, of the trivium. And the first time it uh, appeared was in India in the fourth or fifth millennia before Christ, a long time ago. And it was in the form and used to create the caste system of the society. Up at the very top of this caste system was the holy priests. These holy priests knew this full trivia. They knew how to critically think using all three methods. Below this caste system, or below that cast was the royalty and the military. And they knew partial trivia. They knew how to partially think. Below them was the merchants. They were in charge of the economy and knew one part of the trivia in order to carry that out. <clears throat> below them, as you can guess, was the labor force and the slaves. And they knew none of it. They, they knew their skills in order to do their job, but they were not how to critically think. This caste system was passed down through history. It went to Egypt, it went to Greece. It ended up in the Middle Ages where the church knew the full trivium, below them, the royalty, and all the way down to the peasants. <clears throat> all the way up until 150 years ago, it was even taught in American school systems. It, came, it surfaced back up and was being taught in these 
one room, one classroom environments with a mixture of age of students that were excelling. They were able to be taught this critical thinking and starting with a young age at four years old, they started with general grammar and how to organize the sensory data that we are experiencing. Once they hit 10 years old, their two hemispheres of their brain start to fuse together and they move on to logic, how to think about this data that they've learned to gather and, and, and organize. <clears throat> Once they hit 14 and through uh, 17 years old, they move on to rhetoric, how to share that with others. And those older students were charged with teaching the younger kids. So in this one classroom, there was age groups all up and down, and everybody taught and learned from one another. <clears throat> then in the early 19th century, the government took control of our education process. It broke apart this trivium into separate subjects. And we can see through our history of the public education system, things haven't really turned out that great. Um, I can go, I'm going to save this for another speech about the history of our education system and how the Prussian education system was brought over and imprinted onto the American public in order to create efficient citizens to fill the economy. Another subject. So now that we understand kind of what Trivium is and we understand the history of where Trivium uh, came from, what do we do with it? Well, as I said, with the age groups being taught how to critically think, once you understood the trivium, you were then able to go out and learn anything. You could go process any data, process it, and then be able to share it with others. And you could go into the other uh, four other liberal arts, and, and the learning curve is exponentially shortened because you know how to critically think. So, in my research with learning how to uh, educate my children, I wanted to bring this to your attention because uh, it's something that I see is valuable and if you have children, it's something that you might want to be able to share with them. Thank you. <clears throat>